This is episode number 180 of the Homeowner Show. Whether you're DIY or looking to hire, we're here to help you find the best information and options for you and your home. My name is Kevin Hackett, and here with me is Craig Williams. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Homeowner Show. We're so glad that you could join us for another episode of the Homeowner Show. That's right. Here from the Homeowner Show Studios. This is the one and only Homeowner Show Studio. Oh, it's all echoey. Look at that. What are you doing? I'm watching, watching the show. Why? Leave me alone. <laughs> you're, watch, you're watching us on the show as we're, you know, live on Facebook right now. I'm terribly handsome. <laughs> terribly, terribly, terribly <laughs> handsome. <That's right. laughs> oh, what's going on, man? I can't look away from myself. Well, I can. Look at that. I'm, I'm constantly looking away from you. How are you doing? Good looking. <laughs> It's weird right now. I feel it. There's. A, I, I hope everybody else isn't hearing the same echo. There is a. There is a weird echo in the studio. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's I think prob- that, did it just go away? Um. No. It, no. It's still there. It's definitely, definitely still there. But it's coming through on your computer. Yeah, I know. Now. It's, it's echoey because it's coming through on my computer. <laughs> That's what it is. Well, I think oh I think we we had some guests and I had the mics up on some other people. Okay. Maybe that was it. We'll figure it out. How about that? Oh, I don't. Whatever you just did, it's gone. Look at that. That I, man, you are a something. Studio genius. You're something. Yeah. Look That's, at that, man. I sure am glad we started this episode because <laughs> we were totally prepared. <laughs> totally prepared. That's right. Yeah, we have all of the things ready for today's episode all right so real quick okay we gotta we gotta take a moment yes we do because something big happened okay what was it in your life in my life yeah what happened tell everybody oh i I accepted an offer on my house (laughs) hey and everybody went wild (laughs) the crowd went wild the crowd went wild (laughs) kevin sold his house y'all yeah so he is currently Homeless. (laughs) Homeless. <laughs> yeah, he's he's unqualified to host the show. That's, that's actually true. That's funny. Uh, that's the funniest thing you've said in a long time, Greg. <laughs> Took well, me 180 episodes. Yeah. Cheers. So, so um, last week's episode, if you remember, I mentioned that we were going to put our house up on the market <laughs> that week. Yep. And it was a little bit crazy this weekend. <laughs> we put it up our house up on Thursday and we had, Oh, we had a lot of people coming through our house. Um, did you say you were like 30 showings or something? No. It, well, I think it was like 20 plus 20 oh, in three days. Though. Overselling. I mean, there's a lot <laughs> overselling. <yeah. laughs> um, so it, God, it felt like a lot. I was thankful. We had, we had shipped our kids off to grandma's house and I was really glad that we did that. Cause I mean, it was like all the time. In fact, it it got to the point where my wife was like writing it down on a spreadsheet when we were actually having people at our house because we we're like, are we supposed to be here? Are we not supposed to be here? What's going on? So we just left all day, <laughs> and uh, we we literally from Friday evening until Sunday evening did not eat at our house. Every oh single God. every single meal we eat we ate out. Every How terrible because uh, I'm. I'm not complaining. <laughs> All I'm saying is that that's not usual for us. Uh-huh. Um, and so, anyway, it worked out. We got multiple offers over asking, which is wonderful. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we're we excited, although we're homeless. Cause we're, we're, <laughs> so we did accept an offer. Uh, of course, not everything's finalized in any way, shape, or form, but uh-huh. it's been accepted. Um, we're moving through the process, and yeah. Now we just need to find where we're going to live <laughs> from there <laughs> permanently. At least it's exciting, man! Congratulations. Thanks. Yo, it, no, we're trust like it, me. No, it's 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 a big. I mean, like not knowing where you're gonna go. Oh yeah. Like I I know that's a big like, it, it, like that's a, like not just for you. Like the big step for like your wife. Yeah. Okay. So let's put let's let's really put this into perspective because here's here's the thing we've been talking about this for over a year about what we were gonna do. Right. Because we want to buy a property on some land. Uh huh. And even if that means we need to build a barnuminium like we discussed last week, which you're pretty much sold on. Pretty much sold on. Yep. If we can find land only, which you know we'll see what we find. 
But the thing is, we live in such a market right now that in order to make an offer on another property, it doesn't matter what it is, uh huh. you need to not have a contingency. Right. You need to not be under a mortgage. You need to be able to pay for something. And so... Uh, uh, Maybe because, let's be honest, you missed out on... on on an opportunity because your house wasn't we sold. did yeah we did we had a we had a great opportunity I'm not, I'm not, property I'm not, I'm not trying to rub it I'm not trying to rub it in your face or right. anything like it but no, like, no, like no. that's that's what happened no we we found a great place that we really really liked we hadn't sold our house it wasn't even up on the market yet and we just didn't we missed out on it right and so this is the this is the crazy thing our realtor Brandy Brandy Burke I'll, I'll put a yeah plug out for her she's been on our our, she's our show fantastic. before she's wonderful. Uh, we love her. She she does great. And she told us a year ago, she said, guys, I hear what you're asking. You want to buy another property. Let me explain to you that you're not going to be able to do that when you still have a mortgage. Right. It's just not going to happen. She said, I'm sorry to tell you, you're going to have to sell your house before you can buy something else. Yeah. And I was like, what? Like, I've always heard that you can... You know, be in process. You can right? make some moves. You, you can finagle. Right. You can wheel and deal. Not, not, not in this not market. In, nope. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. And so, yeah, we sold our house and we don't have another house to move into. Now, yeah, we, we figured out a, an option. We, we found a place to move into, to lease for a time. Yeah. Thankfully, it's a month to month. So it's going to work out for us well. We're not going to get into a long term anything. So that we can be fluid, so that we can buy something if well, we're and, ready. And, and you guys, you guys are in a little bit different situation than most people. I mean, you guys had backup plans for your backup plans. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. You yeah, know? because it, we we have a camper, right? Uh, it's a it's a nice enough camper that we could live in it if we need to. Yeah. And honestly, I still expect that's going to happen. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, if we wind up buying a piece of property, I'm moving on it. Yeah. Immediately with the camper. With the camper. Yeah. And I, I mean, legitimately, what I think is going to happen is we're going to wind up on a cam- in a camper, eventually, uh-huh. and buy some sort of metal building, like a, a storage shed, and it'll be big enough to kind of store all of our stuff, mm-hmm. and then also maybe build out like a small bathroom and a little living area so that we have like a little bit more space, but... I expect that's probably still going to happen. So we're we're set up to be able to like if worse came to worse, we could live at a KOA if we needed to, right? <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm kind of half hoping you guys end up in the Sam so that we can go pig hunting every once in a while. <laughs> that that would be kind of fun. That would be fun. That would be fun. So anyway, I, it's it's a weird time, and those of you out there that are looking to buy a house right now, like it's weird. It's a weird weird time. I mean, but like I said, we had multiple offers. Most of them were over asking price and um honestly it, it's one of those deals where it's like you don't know what's going to happen or i mean we've had we've had numerous people who were trying to be helpful mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> who were like oh it's a great time to sell your home but it's a horrible time to buy a home was true but it's like well thanks for telling us yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the process. Thank you for telling us that. Um, Thanks for that heads up, Magellan. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's like, you know, if you're going to buy high, I mean, if you're going to sell high, you're going to buy high. Right. It's just the way it is. Um, unless you can get into this weird vortex. Vortex of the, where it's like. the market. Yeah. Yes. Where you predicted a market and you, you sell high and then it crashes somehow, you know, that. Or you got the wherewithal to hang on until it does crash. Right. Which, I mean, most people just don't have that luxury i mean no i mean the reality of it is we we came out really really well on this home because um the, just the market has increased so much that we've we've made a lot of money on on the investment of this home when you lease a home or you rent an apartment or whatever it is the money just goes away flushing it, it down to pooper that's right and, and it, i'm not saying that that's not a good option for a lot of people, because depending on the lifestyle that you're trying to live mm-hmm. and what you're trying to do with your life, it may be a great option. But yeah. You're not investing anything. It's just money that you will never see again. Right. right. It and, and the people that you're paying it to 
are just getting richer off mm. of it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's, it's just the way it goes. So, anyway, I, I don't know. I honestly, I'm in this weird, like, super excited place. Uh-huh. And also, like, oh, my gosh, we got so much to do. We've got to move. I hate moving. Yep. Oh, it's well, awful. Speaking of things to do. Yeah. We got to pay the bills. We got to pay the bills. Pay them bills. All right. Well, I'll go first. This episode is sponsored by Sustained Growth Solution, your absolute number one best option for small business owners and big business owners, I guess. Absolutely. To get good yeah. quality, referral quality, lead generation, Sustained Growth Solutions can do that for you. A lot of these uh, lead generation places out here, they're, they're just scamming you, to be honest. And um, Sustained Growth Solutions uh, sends every single lead that they get to one contractor making exclusive leads, giving you the option to close every single one of them. So if you're looking for referral quality leads, come to your inbox, come to your phone all the time, each and every month, give them a call, send them an email, info at Sustained Growth Solutions. They are your number one choice for lead generation. Actual leads, y'all. That's right. Yep. Who else? This episode is also brought to you by Termosave. Termosave is the only residential termite warranty company in the business, which means that they are the only one that can affordably protect your home against termites. So many companies scam you with $1,000 bills to treat termites when you could have simply prevented that cost with a $35 fee. 35 bucks? 35 bucks a month. Goodness gracious. Protect your home with Termosave for $35 a month. Termites cause over $2 billion of damage in residential construction every year. Protect your home with Termosave right now with a warranty. Send them a message at info at Termosave.com and get your home inspected and protected today. Kev? Yes. We did a thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay, so here, let me set the stage. Uh-huh. Okay, Craig, you called me. Yep. And you're like, hey. As so many of our, our adventures begin. Yes, so all, <laughs> pretty much all of them. <laughs> and you say, hey, uh, what are you doing Thursday? I'm like, I don't know. Hopefully nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're like, well. Nay, I nay. say. <laughs> it's like, no, I probably got something for you. Um, you're like, are you up for an adventure? I'm like, oh, well. Now you piqued my interest. Uh-huh. Does it include lunch? <laughs> That's really the way that way. <laughs> lunch is included. <laughs> okay, I'm in. What do you want me to do? And he's like, um, well, someone gave me a pool table. I was like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> but here's how that the rest of that conversation goes. I and go, heroes before us had failed. <laughs> That's That's true. That's true. Like legitimate heroes. Legitimate heroes. That, do we want to call them out? No, we don't want to, right? Well, not specifically by no. their department. Okay. No, but <laughs> but the bottom line is a group of muscular firefighters yes. decided we can't move that thing. Yeah. We don't want that because we can't move it. How are we supposed to move that thing? And Craig calls me, obviously, <laughs> and this is like, Kevin... I Being think of great stature that right. you are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my five foot seven physique <laughs> uh, and a little bit of a belly here uh, was like, surely we can both move this thing, right? Uh-huh. And uh, I remember very specifically, I said, Craig, here's the thing. I'm pretty sure mm. in about a month, I'm going to need some help moving stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out less than that. <laughs> Turned out less than that. Um, when and where? <laughs> I'll move whatever you need me to because I'm going to need the reciprocated uh-huh. help. Um, and so we started off with a good lunch. I'll tell you that. And we did. We start. We, I, I, do we want to talk about lunch? I can, bu- <laughs> I butter my help. <laughs> you do. It was literally, <laughs> we literally had butter, honey, butter, honey. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, okay. We, we got a skillet cornbread, uh-huh. cast iron skillet cornbread. This is at I'm the pretty sure Red, it had Brick Tavern Red Brick Tavern in downtown Conroe. Yes, and and I think it I think it had a jalapenos in it. It did, yeah. And some other. Well, it wasn't jalapenos. It was uh, hatch chilies. Oh, oh. 
and it also had sweetness. Yes. I don't know what. Oh my goodness. There was I, there was all kinds I, of good stuff going on. I have never. I told Craig. I said, I have never had cornbread this good. Yeah. And he goes, really? And I go, yeah, <laughs> really. Never. And you looked at me like cockeyed when I ordered it too. Oh, I was. <laughs> well, I was thinking. I, I'm I'm fine with an appetizer. The corn, okay. I mean, I I like cornbread. Yeah. But I had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. Yeah, it's I could have I could have eaten like four of those. Yeah. And that's it. But it would have been way cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been. But we didn't stop there. No, no, no. Because then we also got a pizza. Uh huh. Could do you want to explain the pizza? Well, so this is so if if you guys are from the Conroe area and you haven't been to the Red Brick Tavern, go to the Red Brick Tavern. Yes. They have a wood-fired oven pizza oven. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they have lots of specialty pizzas, but they have this one in particular. It's a filet mignon gorgonzola pizza. Oh. So, it, but like you, you really have to like those kinds of things in order to enjoy this pizza. Yeah, I mean. Oh, because it's got caramelized onions. It's got yeah. gorgonzola it's got pesto. cheese. It's got pesto on it. It's got filet mignon. Oh. And, and so, but like it's a, it's a pretty good sized pie. Oh, oh! I mean, we didn't eat all of it. No, I mean, we ate all the cornbread. We ate all. <laughs> we the did cornbread. not. <laughs> we did. We didn't eat all the pizza, but only one slice. I just, just <laughs> this is a pretty good sized pizza. Yeah, but I mean, the two of us just, shared it, and then we were plentiful. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think we would have been plentiful without the cornbread. Oh yeah. So we we definitely that was really good. But then we go to the place that has the pool table. Uh -huh. And you had done some research a little bit on this, yeah, which is good because and, and by a little bit, I'm like I'm underselling. Like I done I done a lot of research, a lot. Because here's the thing: there's pool tables, and then there's actual pool tables. Right. This is there is not, a significant difference. There is. So, um, I, I'll tell you, it's an old housing mm -hmm. pool table. Yep. Which is a name brand. If you don't know, it's a, uh, most of you know. It's like buying a Brunswick type of thing, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a name brand. It's a sl full slate table. Uh huh. It's not a wooden piece of junk. Nope. And uh, yeah, in fact, we got there and um, someone said, uh, "Where's everybody else?" Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, I, I think my words were, "Look at us." <laughs> What makes you think yeah. that we can't do this? Well, I, I and I think that's a reasonable reaction, right? Because oh, yeah. I mean, one, they'd already had four guys show up who are pretty big dudes. Yep. And this is this is exactly what was said to me. It's like, look, I just had four guys show up, and they were really big dudes, and they're bigger than you. And what makes you think that you can move this? Well, first of all, don't tell me what I can't do. It, yeah. That's first of all, right? Don't yeah. tell either Craig or me. Either one of us, you can't do something right. because bull crap is probably going to be said back to you. <laughs> right. So, I mean, like, here's here's the the theme for the show. Okay. Everything is figure outable. Oh, absolutely it is. Yeah. And, and most of the things in life are simply as some of their parts. Yeah. Right? Right? For sure. And so that's really what happened here. Well, it, we, we subtracted the parts. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, so I love pool. Oh, yeah, me too. I love playing pool. I'm probably better than you. I've always wanted a pool table. <laughs> Give it time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a table now. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, I've, I've always wanted, and so, like, it was, it, 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 so you tell me, like, free pool table, it's a nice pool table. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. You, I think you said it was probably, like, a two or $3,000 pool oh, table. Oh, yeah. Easy. Yes. So, like, that's that's money I don't have to spend. So if you tell me, like, look, just figure out how to move it and get it in your house, mm -hmm. done. I'm in. I'm going to figure it out. Yep. So I did my research. You and I just showed up mm -hmm. with some simple tools. Oh, okay. So first of all, by research, you mean YouTube. Yes. That's all you need that's all in I needed. life. But yeah. we showed up with, let, let's name the tools. Okay, we showed up with a... <clears throat> uh, Ryobi drill, a, a regular Ryobi drill, uh huh, and with a with the Ryobi um, impact drill, oh, uh -huh. okay, and then a pair of pliers, yep, and a a flathead screwdriver and a pocket knife, and yes, pocket knife actually came in. It was one of the most 
that was one of the most important things we had as a pocket knife. Yeah. Because we here's the thing. Uh, the the pool table felt is stapled about four million times <laughs> to to the actual wood. And honestly, the pliers were having a hard time getting it started. Yeah. The flathead was having a hard time getting it started. But the knife. The knife did the job. Buck knife. It was just a buck knife, yeah. right? That's all it was. Got it started. I was afraid you were going to break that. I think I have it thing. right here in my pocket. Yeah. I, I can tell I, you exactly what kind it I is. I literally thought, uh, maybe it's an old timer. It is. What is it? It's an old timer. I can't read the name. My dad gave me this knife, though. Oh, that's sweet. I can't read. I can't like see if you can read it. I can't read the the name on the side oh, of the knife. Yeah, but it's a, it's a uh, no. I can't either. It it it's like a buck knife. Yeah. Or or yeah. I mean, if you guys can can they see that? Yeah. Is that is yeah. that is yeah. focused yes. properly? Oh, okay. no, you're good. Yeah. It's it's just a. <laughs> well, there it goes. <laughs> that broke it. That broke. Now was, the knife's done. I was literally afraid that um you were gonna snap off the the end of the blade, but. <laughs> Um, but he didn't, which is good. But that's a, that was it. That ended up being like one yep. of the most important tools that we had on the whole thing. Yeah. Well, because it saved that, us so much time. And that was the most time consuming thing of this entire ordeal was taking all the staples out. Well, I mean, like, I think we're kind of putting the card a little bit before. We the are. Worst. But so here's we moved a pool table. Yeah. <laughs> By two people. It's on the other side of this door, yeah. in fact. Yeah. And, and, and so, like, the problem was, is when we showed up, she had had four guys in that house that had said, we can't move this pool table. Yep. And the, the reason they couldn't move the pool table is because they tried to just pick it up and take it out the door. Oh, my gosh. And there were several problems with that whole process, right? One, they hadn't done any thinking <laughs> about it. <laughs> Two, they hadn't asked any questions. Right. All they heard was free pool table, and they uh -huh. showed up with four guys and said, we can do this. Uh -huh. Well, like, they were going to have, in order to pick it up and move it out of the room it was in, they were going to have to turn it sideways, uh -huh. which just wasn't going to happen. No. Like, I mean, I'm sorry, but, like, slate is crazy heavy. Yo, I, I don't think people fully understand. I, we'll get to that in a second. Sure. But it's super heavy. But most people don't know that pool tables come apart. Yes. Yes, they do. You know, and, and it doesn't take a whole lot of research. And I'm sorry, like, it took me maybe 30 to 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had a, uh, yeah. I had a mosquito uh, hawk. Mosquito hawk. Mayfly. Yeah. That's what oh, they're called. Mayfly. People call them mosquito hawks, but they're mayflies. Okay, it's, a, it's whatever. Yeah. Um, land on my microphone, yeah. that jerk. What? Go ahead. Sorry. Most people just don't understand that pool tables come apart. And they're yeah. intended to come apart. Well, because you can't move them otherwise. No, you cannot. And and, and honestly, the you way cannot safely move them, not safely for the people moving them, or safe for the table. No, because I mean, literally, the only way to pick a table up like this is is, is to reach underneath it and pick it up, just like you'd move anything, right? Yeah. But it's so heavy. What you're picking up would, if you could, I mean, and and we're not. Um, uh, what what's her name from Encanto? We're not her. I don't know her name. Oh my gosh! You've seen the movie though. I do know what you're talking okay. about. Okay, we're not her. She carries donkeys. She do oh, she's pretty hilarious. We're not her. Uh huh. Right. Um, but if you did that, it would just break. Yep. I mean, because the the just sheer weight of it is just not going to work. Yeah. It, I mean, the physics of it does not work out. Yeah. I mean, eventually, the hardware is going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> just is right even if you were strong enough to be able to do it so yeah. and and like slate like as heavy as it is mm. it's very brittle mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah it can it it, it can um crumble yeah really. it crumbles really easily yeah it does oh it's heavy it's just so heavy yeah exactly <laughs> so uh, so so anyway so what do we do so really what we did we, we took it apart and what you have to start with are the bumpers. Yes. And, you know, you, you, you have to take those off. And it's, it, you know, when you, when you go into a, a, a project like this, at least for me, it always goes a lot quicker in my brain than it does in the actual doing of the project. 
project. Every time. Every time. Yep. And, and so you you start taking the bumpers off. And and really, this is the easiest part of taking the table apart. And mm-hmm. at, least it, at least it was for me. I don't know if that's how you remember it. Oh, th- that was easy because there were just basically three, two or three bolts at the, and the yeah, underside. It was one, of, two, three, four, five, six. On each. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve bolts total. Okay. Okay, so in between in between the pockets, and that that's to be fair, that's just specific to this table. Sure, I, Dif- I every assume. table is different. There's yeah. different manufacturers, and they do mm-hmm. things different. This table had twelve bolts and holding the bumpers in. Yeah, and and you just, I mean, they weren't in. I mean, they're, they're not, not in very far. No, I mean, just a simple ratchet. You know, and and this this take is those out. This is where the, um, not the drill, but the, the, impact, the wrench. impact wrench came yeah. in real handy. It was super easy. You know, we just backed those out. And as soon as you back those out, it's disconnected from the table. Yeah. Those bumpers, you just really have to take the take the, the bumpers, separate them from the pockets. Wait, what they're, they are they're, is they're bolts that go, actually go through the, the wood mm-hmm. and the wood bottom and the slate top. Right in order to secure the bumpers down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I think probably a good tip if you're going to be moving a table on this is, and this is something that we didn't do even though I knew to do it, is to have some baggies prepared in order to hold all your hardware. Oh, yeah, that would have been helpful. Yeah. We, we found some, we but found we didn't some. bring them with us. Yeah, we should have, but we <laughs> just, and I knew that I needed them. I just, you know, <laughs> forgot. Forgot. And thankfully they had some at the house that we could use. Right. So, so anyway, so we pulled the hardware out of the bumpers and then the, the bumpers themselves, you really want to break those down into individual pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, six separate pieces. Yeah. And, and so there's some bolts typically they're usually those, those bumper, the pockets are actually holding the bumpers together right. with some iron rods that are screwed in that once you remove those bumpers, you can actually go up in there and remove those bolts mm-hmm. in order to separate the bumpers into smaller pieces. It, which it makes really them, was pretty easy. Yeah, it, it, that, that part was super easy, but you want to do that in order to make the transport a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, and from after that, this was the hardest part. Well, and, some, so, and this is something that I learned by putting it back together, is you really want to label those. Oh. Because those line up with the bolt holes uh-huh. later on. Okay. And so if you don't have the right one in the right place, those holes don't line up. So your okay. bolts don't line up and you uh-huh. kind of have to like So you're telling me that when I took a picture of the slate, uh-huh, probably was smart. It was smart. We should have <laughs> just taken many other pictures okay. <laughs> or or marked Really, right. I mean, really, it's just me, a, it's just like a chalk mark or something. Something to say, like, hey, bottom left, mm-hmm. hey, top right. Mm-hmm. You know, this is where this one goes. Yeah, uh, because I mean, like, they, in theory, should be interchangeable. You would think, but they're not. I mean, they they are, mm-hmm. but those bolt holes that we just talked about that you took to secure the bumpers mm-hmm. don't line up. Okay. If you don't get the right one in the right okay. spot. I mean, like, depending on the manufacturer. Sure. You know, I'm sure there's some manufacturer out there that gets it perfectly right every single time. Probably not. This one's not one of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I figured it out, but like, it just it was sure. an, an, an annoying extra step later on. Yeah. So once we get the bumpers off, um, the then you you have to take the felt off. You got to take the felt off. Because, the, because underneath the felt is the slate. Yes. And so you have to take the felt off. Well, it is stapled. This is by far the uh, step that took the longest. Without any doubt. I mean, I legitimately, Craig, I bet there were 200 staples. I don't doubt it. In all the, I mean, <sighs> there wasn't a space all the way around the entire table well, that and that's, there wasn't a staple. That's actually probably something important to back up and, and tell people about is we actually had to remove some staples before we take the bumpers we out did. too. Yeah. Because those pockets actually have strips of leather mm-hmm. that hold the pockets up against the table. Yeah, right. We had to take those staples out too. And those were actually difficult. Those were probably... Those were probably so more difficult the, than the rest of Because going through that leather, it was real leather. Yeah. So, and thick leather and, too. And so like there weren't as many of them, mm-hmm. but those staples were harder. Yeah, they were. So, anyway. so we had to take every staple out. We did that with the knife. 
Um, well, we started with a flat head yeah. and, a, and a pair of needle nose pliers. Ugh. And we th- it was we, not working. We really thought that it was going to go a lot quicker than it did. Mm-hmm. Um, but flathead screw and like a pretty, pretty small flathead screwdriver and a pair of needle nose pliers that convert. Oh, think, these are weird. I think pliers. I've talked about these pliers before yeah. in the show. They're, they're actually my favorite pair of pliers. They're awesome. They flip. They invert in between a flathead pair of pliers and a needle nose pair of pliers. So they have a lot of functionality to them. Yeah. Um, but we weren't able to get a grip on these staples nah. really well, either with the flathead or the pair of pliers. So we moved over to the the pocket knife. Right. And really what we were doing is we were just popping them out with the yep. pocket knife and then grabbing them with the pliers. It was so much easier. Yeah. So and it really helped to have two people. It did. Yeah. No, it absolutely. And you, you, you well, have to have two people. You to move have this to have old, two people to move this to thing. move this thing. So once we get the felt off, which honestly that that did take a very that long took, time. I mean, I like mean, probably. I mean that that process itself was forty five minutes. I, w- I would say at least took forty percent of the time. Hundred percent. Yeah. Absolutely. Taking the, taking the table. Apart. Absolutely did. Yeah. And so then we just roll the felt up, take it out with yep. us. And now we're down to the slate. Yes. So at this point, there's just some giant screws, like like big, like three inch screws, and they're they're nice and thick, um, and they're grooved they are, into the slate. Yeah, and that yeah, they're kind of even at an angle. Yes. And they're, I mean, they're very well secured in there, but the uh, impact wrench took them out really, really easily. Um, and I don't uh, recommend putting them back with the impact. Oh, uh, okay, that makes sense because then it could. Again, with the brittleness of the slate, could crack the slate. Could really crack easy. it. Yeah. So, um, we just removed those. There's two on each side of, of each piece of slate. So there's three pieces of slate underneath the pool table, uh, or on the pool table is made up of three pieces. So it's like of nine slate. screws in total. Yeah. Uh, two, four, six, eight, twelve. Twelve. Yeah, there's okay. twelve. Um, and so we took all those out, and from there. It was literally just picking those pieces of slate up and moving them individually, but um, those things are heavy. Yeah, even even as individual, I mean, because the slate gets broken up into three pieces. They're three pieces, yeah. But I'm guessing, you you tell me what you think. I bet that each of those pieces of slate are eighty to a hundred pounds each. Easy, easy, if not more. If yeah. I mean, we we obviously can move them fairly easily because we're muscular, incredibly. Oh yeah, look at me. You know, you know, bah, type I of mean, people. If you can see my pecs bouncing back and forth right now. I, well, you've got on that puffy jacket. <laughs> Who's gonna know? Anyway, um, but really, it was not that big of a deal. No, I mean, three pieces, two people. We were able to pick them up, move them, and then from there, we literally the rest of it was just the base. We moved that in one piece. We could have taken the, the legs off, but we didn't have to. We didn't have to. There, yeah. I mean, that the bottom was... The bottom piece was half the weight of one piece of slate. Yeah. And so that was super easy to move. Put on the back of his truck, which you... Okay, you've got a, uh, a regular... You've got a quad cab pickup mm-hmm. that's got a regular bed on it, which is five and a half feet yep. this, at this day. It's like a six-foot bed. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you've got a, a toolbox tool on it. Yeah. So I mean, we we fit everything back there. Easy. No issue. I mean that we we actually had the we should have taken a picture. We had the <laughs> the actual base of the pool table hanging on the outside of the right of the uh, tailgate, but we had it all strapped down. Everything yeah. was good. Well, and the the way like I I watched a professional pool moving company. And I watched how they strapped it and moved it, and like I was like, man, this looks exactly like how these guys did it. Yeah. Um, and, and, like, easy. And, and so when we put the slate in the bed, mm-hmm. we actually stacked it on top of mm-hmm. one of. And they said part of the reason you do that is the weight of it actually helps stabilize it so that it doesn't crack and get damaged in transport. Yeah. They said don't you know obviously don't go over major potholes or anything like that. <laughs> Um, Although which, there's there's a major pothole on the way to your house right uh, now. Yeah, there's a huge <laughs> pothole which we had to duck away from. Yeah, um, but th- you know, like other than that, like you know, they said like the weight of it mm-hmm. should help stabilize it, sure, and prevent any damage from happening. So like mm-hmm. you, re- but you didn't really have to put, put like any blankets down, no, 
We or didn't do any of that. Anything in between the pieces of slate? Because I mean, a lot of people don't know that they're like, there's huge chunks of wood underneath a slate. Mm -hmm. and, and so what you're doing is you're putting wood on the bottom with slate on the top. And then you're coming back through and you're putting wood on top of that slate with another piece of slate and then wood on top of that slate. And so the, the slate never actually touches anything mm. other than the wood that it's been designed to sit up against. Right. Which wood has a lot more give to it, it does. Than, than that slate does. Yeah, it does. So it, it provides, that even provides an extra layer of cushion sure. for, the, for that it really expensive piece of rock. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it really was, I, honestly... I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Uh huh. Well, neither I mean, one of us did. No, we didn't. And, I, and the thing That's is, why I said, "Are you ready for an adventure?" I <laughs> and I didn't know. Um, I knew it involved pizza, and I was in. But um, <laughs> but I, I honestly, guys, I I will tell you this right now. I I would, if someone asked me to move a pool table, I would go sure. Let's I do would, this. I would rather move a pool table than a piano any day. Any day. Any day. Any day. I've moved I, a piano. I don't want to do it again. Got a piano, Kirk. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a piano. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it was no big deal. Yeah. Well, and like with with pianos, I mean, like just seen furniture dollies. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Furniture one, one furniture dolly, and you can move it. a piano. You can move it. Well, this piano. and yours is an upright, right? Mine's an upright. Yeah, I mean, like those, they're not terribly hard to move. You just need a couple of guys in a furniture they're heavy. dolly. They're heavy. So, yeah. I mean, that that's really it. Yeah. So and like. It, we, I've I've shot a few hands on the uh, the pool table in the okay in the shop now. Yeah, it was way easier to put together than it was to take apart. I believe that. I mean, but it only took us like two and a half hours. I, it did it take that long? I'm I'm guessing it probably did. But I'm I, again over at least Wait, an no, hour of that was taking out staples. Taking because, out staples. But we didn't. If we would have started with that knife. Rather than starting the way we did, it would have taken less time. I, I think you're probably yeah. right. Live and learn. Live and learn. Yeah. So, and, like, I had a I had a uh, pneumatic-powered staple gun mm -hmm. in order to, to put it back together. Yeah. But it was easy. It took hardly any time at all. Yeah. So, now, I will say this. Uh, you know, you, you can only restretch felt so many times. Right. I get the sense this was the first time this felt was moved. Okay. So I, I I think I lucked out on that one because mm -hmm. otherwise I think I might have had to replace the felt. Yeah. Um and and that that might not be super cheap. That being it, said, honestly, I I've replaced felt on a pool table. It was about 400 bucks. That was including labor. That's not So terrible. honestly, now that we know how to how to take apart the bumpers and everything, I I I need to watch some be, videos on how to replace the felt on the bumpers. It would. I mean, it would. I can't imagine it's, it's terribly difficult. It's but just, like no, it's not that not that big of a deal. Um, I just want to look into it because I I don't, I don't know how time consuming it is. Yeah, but I I think it would be super cool if we could get a uh, a pool table that had the uh, the homeowner show logo in the middle. Oh, or oh that and the light above. The light above. The light above. The, yeah. You know, the the big bar light, right? Yeah. That's what we need. That's what. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Hey, if you know someone who can make that kind of thing, let us know. Yeah, we would love to like promote the ever living hell out of your business. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Don't think we wouldn't. We will. Uh, we will. So, yep. Anyway, we moved a pool table. We did. We did a thing. It was weird, but it was easier than we thought it would be. Yeah. And and again, now that we know how to do it, it would be so much easier to do it a second time. But don't call me to move your pool table. No. No, not unless there's pizza involved. Even then, it's got to be like it's got to be pretty good pizza. Good pizza. <laughs> that was good pizza. That was good pizza. I mean, I'm cool with learning something, but like sure. now I know something. Yeah. So it's got to be pretty good pizza. Yeah, because I mean now, it's it's like an expertise thing, right? <laughs> right. Like you're not just paying for my my muscles. Now you're paying for my brains. Oh yeah. That that's worth more. Yeah. It just is. I'm sorry. It just is. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not your brain. <laughs> it depends on who's brain. <laughs> yeah, brainless. <laughs> but yeah, what else, man? Anything else? I think that's it. Okay, man. Thank you for downloading today's episode of the Homeowner Show. If you have not already, go click the like button, subscribe to our channel, leave us a five star rating review on 
Apple, uh, Apple, 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 <laughs> Apple, iTunes. We would love that. Um, and yeah, find us on YouTube, find us on Facebook, share us with your friends. Thanks for being here. Until next time, we'll see you later. See you.